everybody and welcome back to another Captain's Academy episode with your instructor Chase. And in episode 30 today I'm going to be talking about armor piercing versus high explosive. When you should use one and when you should use the other. Now it's probably a good idea that before you start to watch this particular episode that you first go watch the previous ones on things like damage saturation, armor angling, uh, you know, penetration mechanics, and things like the ability to even overpen citadels before you watch this one, as this video will build on top of those particular videos. So uh, how I'm going to structure this video is I'm going to start off talking about battleships, then cruisers, then destroyers, and talk about when you should use you know, the various kinds of ammunition and the reasons why you should do that. So without much further hesitation, let's get started and let's take a look at battleships. So battleships are actually kind of easy in terms of shell selection as the majority of time when you're playing a battleship, you're probably going to be sticking with armor piercing. So typically speaking, if you're able to overmatch the angled portions of an enemy ship, you're using armor piercing in order to get good penetration damage. If they're giving you a broadside and you have enough penetration to go through the side armor, um, maybe not enough to go through citadels even, but as long as you can get through the side armor, you're going to be using AP because you can get loads of penetration damage. Why wouldn't you? If you have broadside and you can get citadels, definitely get armor piercing because that's what allows battleships to absolutely delete everything. Then of course if you are in a situation where you're too close and the enemy ship is a lightly armored ship and they're broadside, then armor piercing into the water. If they are close and they are heavily armored, then just armor piercing into the water line. So still using armor piercing. The two exceptions to the rule about armor piercing is when you're against destroyers or when you're against an bowing angled battleship. So if you are against destroyers, you can either choose to change from AP to HE, or you can actually continue to use AP, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but HE is viable. Against bowing angled battleships, let's say you are a tier 10, you're facing a Yamato who's just pointing his bow at you and you can either choose to, I guess, AP into the superstructure and get penetration hits, which is possible, not the easiest thing to do, especially at range. So in that particular circumstance, you might want to consider using HE, even though your HE damage would still be lower compared to the penetration damage of the superstructure when you use AP. With HE, you can get fires, and fires can be pretty devastating things. But let's address the latter two things in a little bit more detail. So against destroyers, yeah, if, especially if the destroyer is broadside, AP, it will do pretty consistent damage because you'll pretty much always do overpen damage. But it's not really all that great. Uh, yes, in some rare occasions like this one, something happened and I got a penetration, but most times all I'm going to do is see overpens. So if I'm in a Nikolai, for example, where my armor piercing is 8,600 damage, and I do 10% of that, it's only 860 damage per overpen. So that's not that great. However, if it's broadside and I'm shooting HE, then I'm almost always going to get penetration damage, which is going to do 33% of my HE shell damage. So the Nikolai, which has 4,500 damage HE, I'll do 1,485 damage per HE pen. So if you are running into destroyers that are constantly giving you broadside, HE would probably be the better choice as you're more likely to see one more consistent damage and two even just more damage because it's more damage because there's a higher percentage of a lower shell damage which is better than only 10% of higher shell damage, right? So if you're watching the clip when you see me fire AP, I'm just getting over pens and it's nothing substantial. However, when I switch over to HE and you see me fire, the damage will be a lot better. So there we go. There's the HE salvo and you can see much, much better damage. So when you're broadside with a destroyer, HE over AP. However, the situation changes when you're dealing with a DD either rushing towards you or running away from you. Here, HE is still going to do rather consistent damage, but it is still going to be 33% of 4,500 damage, which is still 1,485 damage per HE shell. However, in the same situation, when you're firing AP and you get penetration, because now, you, if you understand the whole penetration mechanic, now the shells have time to arm and detonate, 
Here, I'll get 33% damage, and that is now 2,838 damage per pen, per shell. Of course, again, when damage saturation happens, damage is lowered, but that's both true for AP and HE. So in this situation, AP is actually the better ammunition. So as a battleship player, depending on the circumstances, sometimes HE is better because it is more consistent. But AP is better in certain situations because you just have a greater chance to take off 33% of AP versus only 33% of HE damage. The only other time really you're going to have to decide whether you're going to use AP or HE is if you're dealing with uh, an enemy battleship that's sort of angled bowing towards you. Or at least angled enough where if you shoot you're likely to bounce shots. Again, it's not an exact perfect science as, you know, if depending on range, angle, a fall of your shot, how much penetration there is on your shells, etc. You can still get some decent penetrating hits. But if you're in a situation where you're firing at a ship and you're getting a lot of bounces or you're just not really doing all that well with armor piercing, that's when you could go for HE. And the reason why HE is good is because you can set fires. and Typically, battleship HE shells, they have a pretty good chance of setting fires, and if the enemy battleship decides to put out the fire on the first fire, then the next one that they take, another salvo from you, when they get set on fire again, they're going to have to burn for that full duration, which is quite a bit of damage. Now, at the same time, AP can lead to good hits. However, AP hits tend to be a little bit more random, and... Uh, it really depends on where you hit. So depending on RNG, depending on the dispersion of shells, if you hit the right places, you can get some penetration damage. Um, and of course, there's also chances where you hit the wrong spots and all you will see are bounces. So AP in this kind of scenario can work if you can hit like the superstructure area or you can hit like the really, really weakly protected deck areas. But it's not that reliable. So in this kind of scenario, and... Generally, I would say if the enemy battleship is stopped or is very, very slow and they're not likely to turn their broadside in. Uh, so here in this salvo, I got a couple of lucky penetrations, did 13,000 damage, but another one I will bounce everything and do nothing, right? So if a battleship is either stopped or stationary and they're pointing their bow at you, I think it's probably a better suggestion to shoot HE as pretty much anywhere it hits, it'll do something and there's a chance of setting fires. Well, AP, it's very specific. You gotta hit the superstructure area, gotta get the penetrations that way. Um, see, in this case, I bounced all my shots and did no damage. So in this situation, you have to decide what which of the options makes you more comfortable. Would you like to set fires, or would you like to go for the penetration hits, depending? One other scenario, and the only other scenario where HE is really viable is let's say you're in a division or you're with other ships and you're paying close attention to what they're doing and let's say they set an enemy ship on fire let's say that ship starts to burn and the enemy ship captain on the first fire hits their damage control and they put the fire out then it is viable to switch over to HE and help your team set stuff on fire just to increase the amount of HP loss to damage over time. But generally speaking, aside from these two, well, two and a half, maybe three situations, um, with a battleship, you want to fire armor piercing. And there's, of course, good reason for that, because if anybody shows you broadside, you could very much delete them. And, of course, the big reason why you fire AP in a battleship is because if anybody gives you a broadside and your aim is good, you do have the capability to wipe massive chunks of HP off of the enemy ship, in this case, that Yamato 8, 89,000. Unfortunately, I didn't kill him in one shot, which is also something that you can do every once in a while. But, I mean, with battleships... If you run into cruisers that give you broadside, and again, you do have to be careful about overpenning citadels, but if you have the right range and you hit the right spots, you can delete so many things. You can delete other battleships, you can delete cruisers, and that is the reason for the battleship to exist in the game, is just to be able to delete things whenever they make a mistake and show you that broadside.
All right, so let's talk about cruisers now. And cruisers is a little bit more complicated because you have things like light cruisers, heavy cruisers. You have some cruisers that excel at some other things. So for example, like Japanese heavy cruisers are good at fires. And they also happen to start at a really low tier. That's when you get 203 millimeter guns. So there's sort of exceptions and small adjustments here and there. But there's still a general sort of rule of thumb. So first up, let's talk about light cruisers. So light cruisers are... Uh, cruisers with guns up to 155 millimeters and pretty much anything that's not giving you a broadside you're going to be slinging HE so that is battleships heavy cruisers other light cruisers even destroyers you're going to be slinging HE on if you run to armored carriers this is tier 9 and 10 uh, and let's say you're playing a Mogami and you have 155s so you're probably going to be slinging HE as well just to get those fires if you run into lightly armored carriers, this is lower tier, you can consider using AP. If you run into enemy ships and they are broadside to you, and depending on the tier, anywhere between 7 to 10 kilometers, you can decide to use AP as well. If really, really close and you've run into something that's lightly armored and broadside to you, go for AP and go for Citadel. So for example, if you're in a Cleveland and you run into a Kuma up close and the Kuma gives you a broadside and it's close to you, and go for Citadel hits. Use AP. Learn when to use it, right? Now, if you're playing heavy cruisers, and like I mentioned earlier, heavy cruisers are some variation because of different nations' traits. But generally, if you have an enemy ship that are at angles lower than 45 degrees for pretty much every nation except for USN, for the USN, it's angles below 60, and you have enough penetration to get through their armor, then use AP. Otherwise, once you know it increases beyond the 45 or 60, depending on which nation, um, you're probably going to be using HE a lot too. Of course, there are some slight, uh, I guess, exceptions to the rule. So, for example, like the Zhao. The Zhao is something you want to sling HE in a lot because that's what the Zhao is great at. Uh, if you're at the Moskva, you might want to consider using AP at even longer ranges than normal because your AP out to range is really, really good. So there's sort of exceptions to these rules of thumb. But again, you know, the rule of thumb, most of the time, this is how things would go, right? Now, with heavy cruisers, if you see ships that are broadside, let's say 10, even between 10 and 12 kilometers, you can go for AP and get some pretty good penetration damage. Now, if you're really, really close and the enemy target is broadside, and let's say there is a, a decent amount of armor on those close-up broadside ships, then go AP and go for their Citadel. Of course, if you're running something that's very lightly armored, again, you might need to use water to help you out just a little bit as you can over-penetrate Citadels with heavy cruisers. So... Aside from sort of certain exceptions, you know, like the Japanese uh, cruisers like the Zhao or the Moskva or things like that, the typical usage rate for cruisers for different shells generally will look a little bit more like this. If you're in a light cruiser, you're going to see yourself using HE more, probably in the 80 to 90 percent range, and 10 to 20 percent you'll use AP. If you're talking about a heavy cruiser, then you're going to be using HE still quite a lot, around 60% of the time. Although there are definitely going to be quite a lot of situations where your AP is going to be viable. So there's probably about 40% time there where you're probably going to be playing around with your armor piercing. Alright, so a few practical examples to show the rules of thumb in action. So let's say in this kind of scenario, I'm in Des Moines, I've run up against an enemy battleship that's somewhat angled. Well, in this kind of scenario, if I shoot AP at the superstructure, much like the way that the battleship shooting at a battleship when angled, yeah, occasionally I'll get a penetration here and there, and I'll maybe do two to 3,000 damage, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. But in a way, this is not really doing, one, too much damage, and B, it's not really having a very great psychological effect on the enemy battleship they're like yeah taking a little bit of damage no big deal a lot of shells will either get blocked by the armor they'll bounce etc so if you follow the rule of thumb this is probably time to use high explosive high explosive the damage is a little bit less compared to if you just get penetration with your ap but the damage can be a little bit more consistent. But that's not the main reason why you want to fire HE. It's because of fires, 
and also because you destroy and disable modules, which reduce the fighting capabilities of the enemy ship. So typically speaking, regardless if you're in a heavy or a light cruiser, if you see enemy ships that are angled like this, it is probably a good idea to fire HE at them. Setting fires, being that sort of supporting ship, is quite an important role actually. So in this case, playing the Des Moines, if I saw this kind of enemy battleship in this kind of position, I just immediately go to HE and start hoping for some fires. Once you see enemy ships giving you broadside, that's pretty much when you switch from HE to AP in a cruiser. Yes, your AP can still do decent damage, and yes, you can still set fires, and the fires will help in terms of how much damage you will do. But in terms of how much damage you can get per salvo, armor piercing is going to be quite a bit better. As you'll see, me putting shots into this Yamato here with HE, yes, I'm seeing 7, 8,000 damage, but it's never really going to go that much beyond it. However, in a similar situation, but you're using AP now, you will see damage like that, where it's in excess of 13,000. Again, do be mindful of damage saturation, as once you drain the section HP, the damage is going to be quite a bit less. So make sure that if you are running into uh, an enemy ship that's giving you a broadside, that you don't just always keep firing into the same section. Once you start to see that damage saturation is starting to have an effect, switch over to other areas that are undamaged. So for example, if I keep shooting at this Yamato, eventually you'll see that the damage into the middle section seems to have dropped off quite a bit, where initially it started off with you know, 13,000, it's starting to look like 6,000. Okay, move over a little bit, shoot at a different section, uh, maybe the bow area of the ship, and try there, because that will most likely get you better damage. So there maybe still facing some damage saturation so eventually you'll see i'll just be like nope switching over to the stern area which is definitely going to be undamaged at the point and there go in excess of 10,000 again so as a cruiser uh, do keep in mind things like damage saturation but uh, definitely when you run into things that are giving you broadside use armor piercing to make their day hell I did forget one thing, which is uh, at distance, you know, let's say 10, 12 kilometers, uh, and you see a cruiser giving broadside, and you have enough penetration, uh, then go for AP as well, and go for citadels, because you are able to do pretty good citadel damage, like here in the Pensacola against the Miyoko. Now, on to destroyer rule of thumb. And for destroyers, well, the rules are actually kind of simple. Ichi is your waifu. Love HE all day, every day, and just pretty much fire HE at everything. Now the exception is when the target is close and broadside, then you can temporarily replace Waifu with AP and use that. So typically speaking, if you're playing a US or Japanese destroyer, let's say the target goes broadside under 78 kilometers, that's pretty much where you can break out the armor piercing. Other than that, you're going to be firing HE all the time. If, of course, you're playing Gloria's Soviet Destroyer, then, uh, well, you can use AP as long as it's broadside within the range of your guns and just pew pew away. But still, I mean, in most cases, you're still going to be using HE. So, for destroyers, the usage rate is typically about 90% HE and about 10% armor piercing. Although for Russian destroyers, it can be a little bit more towards armor piercing. And on to some practical examples. So let's say you're in a situation where there's, let's say, a battleship that's 11 kilometers away from your destroyer. Let's say you're playing US destroyers. Well, HE is going to be your waifu because this is what's going to be able to set fires. I mean, sure, the shells are not going to do all that great in terms of damage. Maybe you'll get a couple hundred here and there. But fires are really going to be what you're going to be using as your weapon. And of course, you're going to make battleships rage, because at this range, if you're actively dodging, they're not really going to be hitting you. Now, as you can see, I do get the initial fire with uh, the high explosive, and you'll see I do occasionally a little bit of damage here and there. But when I switch over to armor piercing, you'll sort of see why AP is not really all that viable. Uh, you're firing it, and you don't really get all that much. A lot of it's either blocked or the shell bounces, and maybe every once in a while if you hit the superstructure, 
you'll get some damage here and there. But the damage is so insignificant that you might as well just go and use HE and hope to get fires. There is a bit of RNG there though, but yeah, I mean, if you fire enough shells, something will eventually happen. However, once you get up close, things start to, well, things start to change a little bit. I mean, if you use HE, well, if you shoot at the superstructure, you're likely to get some damage, um, and you are likely to get some fires here and there. However, when you're up close, if you hit something that's a little bit thicker, let's say the belt armor, pretty much all the damage is going to get blocked, so you almost depend entirely on fires for damage. However, at the closer range, if you switch over to armor piercing, you can actually get very reliable damage, and it's quite a lot, especially when you factor in the rate of fire that your guns are capable of putting out. As you can see, the AP actually becomes very, very consistent, and I get very, very good damage on this Nagato at close range. And of course, when you factor in things like USN destroy rate of fire, you can quickly rack up thousands and thousands of damage. Russian destroyers, like the Khabarovsk, for example, well, armor piercing, as long as the enemy target is broadside, armor piercing is valid ammunition. So, as you can see, here I am shooting at a Yamato 14 plus kilometers away. Yamato is broadside, and I'm having absolutely no trouble racking up that armor piercing penetration damage. So, when you're playing Russian destroyers, when things are angled, you fire HE, but the minute they give you a broadside, just switch over to AP and absolutely wreck stuff. Anyways, folks, if you, generally speaking, follow these rule of thumbs when it comes to using AP or HE, you should find quite a bit of success in-game. Of course, if you do have any questions, do leave those in the comment section below. Aside from all that, folks, good luck out there on the high seas, take care, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.